longitudinally, and forming, in connection with the seven planes, a vast interlacing network. These two sets of spheres, planes and rays form the totality of the solar system, and produce its form spheroidal. Let us withdraw our thought at this juncture from the informing consciousnesses of these three types of spheres, and concentrate our attention upon the realization that each plane is a vast sphere of matter, actuated by latent heat and progressing or rotating in one particular direction. Each ray of light, no matter of what color, is likewise a sphere of matter of the utmost tenuity, rotating in a direction opposite to that of the plane. These rays produced by their mutual interaction a radiatory effect upon each other. Thus by the approximation of the latent heat in matter, and the interplay of that heat upon other spheres that totality is produced which we call, fire by friction. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-153 with in connection with these two types of spheres we might, by way of illustration and for the sake of clarity, say that a. the planes rotate from east to west, b. the rays rotate from north to south. Students should here bear carefully in mind that we are not referring here to points in space, we are simply making this distinction and employing words in order to make an abstruse idea more comprehensible. From the point of view of the totality of the rays and planes there is no north, south, east nor west. But at this point comes a correspondence and a point of real interest, though also of complexity. By means of this very interaction, the work of the four Maharajas or Lords of Karma, is made possible, the quaternary and all subtotals of four can be seen as one of the basic combinations of matter, produced by the dual revolutions of planes and rays. The seven planes, likewise atoms, rotate on their own axis, and conform to that which is required of all atomic lives. The seven spheres of any one plane, which we call subplanes, equally correspond to the system, each has its seven revolving wheels or planes that rotate through their own innate ability, due to latent heat the heat of the matter of which they are formed. The spheres or atoms of any form whatsoever, from the form logoic, which we have somewhat dealt with, down to the ultimate physical atom and the molecular matter that goes to the construction of the physical body, show similar correspondences and analogies. All these spheres conform to certain rules, fulfill certain conditions and are characterized by the same fundamental qualifications. Later we will consider these cons. 154 ATREATISE on Cosmic Fire. Conditions, but must now continue with the effect of rotary action. 2. Momentum, resulting therefore in repulsion, was produced by the rotary movement. We have referred to the law of repulsion as one of the subsidiary branches of the great law of economy, which governs matter. Repulsion is brought about by rotary action, and is the basis of that separation which prevents the contact of any atom with any other atom, which keeps the planets at fixed points in space and separated stably from each other which keeps them at a certain distance from their systemic center, and which likewise keeps the planes and subplanes from losing their material identity. Here we can see the beginning of that age-long duel between spirit and matter, which is characteristic of manifestation, one aspect working under the law of attraction, and the other governed by the law of repulsion.
From E on to E on the conflict goes on, with matter becoming less potent. Gradually, so gradually as to seem negated when viewed from the physical plane, the attractive power of spirit is weakening the resistance of matter till, at the close of the greater solar cycles, destruction, as it is called, will ensue, and the law of repulsion be overcome by the law of attraction. It is a destruction of form and not of matter itself, for matter is indestructible. This can be seen even now in the microcosmic life, and is the cause of the disintegration of form, which holds itself as a separated unit by the very method of repulsing all other forms. It can be seen working out gradually and inappreciably in connection with the moon, which no longer is repulsive to the earth, and is giving of her very substance to this planet. H. P b hints at this in the secret doctrine and i have here suggested the law under which this is so point seven zero seventy one seventy seventy one the moon our satellite pouring forth into the lowest globe of our planetary chain globe the earth all its energy and powers and three P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-155 A B C D Frictional effect on all other bodies atomic, producing Vitality of the atom Coherence of the atom Ability to function Heat supplied to the composite form of which it may form a fragmentary part, whether it is the heat supplied by the rotation of a planet within the form macrocosmic, or the rotation of a cell in the physical body within the form microcosmic. E. Final combustion or disintegration, when the fire's latent and radiatory have achieved a specific stage. This is the secret of final obscuration and of Pralaya, but cannot be dissociated from the two other factors of solar and electric fire. 4. Absorption, through that expression which is seen in all whirling spheres of atomic matter at whichever surface in the sphere corresponds to the point called in a planet the North Pole. Some idea of the intention that I seek to convey may be grasped by a study of the atom as portrayed in Babbitt's Principles of Light and Color, and later in Mrs. Besant's Occult Chemistry. This depression is produced by radiations which proceed counter to the rotations of the sphere and pass down from the north southwards to a midway point. From there they tend to increase the latent heat, to produce added momentum and to give specific quality according to the source from which the radiation comes. This absorption of extraspheroidal emanation is the secret of the dependence of one sphere upon another, and has its correspondence in the cycling of a ray through any plane sphere. Every atom, though termed spheroidal, is more accurately a sphere slightly depressed at one location. Having transferred them to a new center, becoming virtually a dead planet in which, since the birth of our globe, rotation has ceased. S. V. I. 179. 156. A-T-R-E-A-T-I-S-E -E on cosmic fire. That location being the place through which flows the force which animates the matter of the sphere. This is true of all spheres, from the solar down to the atom of matter that we call the cell in the body physical. Through the depression in the physical atom flows the vitalizing force from without. Every atom is both positive and negative, 
it is receptive or negative where the inflowing force is concerned, and positive or radiatory where its own emanations are concerned, and in connection with its effect upon its environment. This can be predicated likewise of the entire ring pass not of the solar system in relation to its cosmic environment. Force flows into the solar system from three directions via three channels. A. B. C. The Sun Sirius. The Pleiades. The Great Bear. I would here point out the connection or correspondence in this statement to an earlier one made when speaking of solar radiation, and the channels through which it can be felt. These currents or radiations we call A, B, C, Akashic, Electrical, Pranic. In considering the occult meaning of what is here suggested, one point in elucidation may be imparted, leaving the working out of the other two relationships to the student. The Pleiades are to the solar system, the source of electrical energy, and just as our sun is the embodiment of the heart, our love aspect, of the Logos who is himself the heart of one about whom not M-A-Y-B-E-S-A-I-D, so the Pleiades are the feminine opposite of Brahma. Think this out, for much is contained in this statement. Certain broad statements have been laid down here concerning the rotation of matter, and the results. Pro. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-157. Ducked in diverse spheres by that rotation. What is predicated of any one sphere or atom can be predicated of all, if it is in any way an occult statement of fact and we should be able to work out these four effects. 1. 2. 3. 4. Separation, or the repulsive effect. Momentum, or the interior effect. Frictional, environal effect. Absorption, the receptive or attractive effect. In every grade and type of atom, a solar system, a sun, a planet, a plane, a ray, the body of the ego, or a cell in the physical body. 3. The qualities of rotary motion. Every rotating sphere of matter is characterized by the three qualities, of inertia, mobility and rhythm. 1. Inertia. This characterizes every atom at the dawn of manifestation, at the beginning of a solar cycle or Mahamanvantara, or 100 years of Brahma, at the commencement of a chain, of a globe, or of any spheroidal form whatsoever without exception. This statement, therefore, includes the totality of manifesting forms within the solar system. Let us keep clearly in our minds that we are simply considering the three qualities of matter itself and are not considering consciousness. Inertia is the result of lack of activity and the relative percent of the fires of matter. These fires, during obscuration or pralaya, though laden, are free from the stimulation that comes from the aggregation of atoms into form, and the consequent interplay of the forms upon each other. Where form exists and the laws of repulsion and attraction are coming into force, making radiation therefore possible, then comes stimulation, emanative effect, and a gradual speeding up which eventually, from within the atom itself, by its own rotary movement produces the next quality. 158. ATREATISE on cosmic fire. 2. Mobility. The inherent fires of matter produce rotary movement. Eventually this rotation results in radiation. 
The radiation of matter, the result of its low heat, produces necessarily an effect upon other atoms in its environment, it matters not whether that environment is cosmic space, systemic space, or the periphery of the physical body of a man, and this interaction and interplay causes repulsion and attraction according to the polarity of the cosmic, systemic or physical atom. Eventually this produces coherence of form, bodies, or aggregates of atoms come into being or manifestation, and persist for the length of their greater or lesser cycles. Until the third quality is brought into definite recognition. 3. Rhythm, or the attainment of the point of perfect balance and of equilibrium. This point of perfect balance then produces certain specific effects which might be enumerated and pondered upon, even if to our finite minds they may seem paradoxical and contradictory. The limitation lies with us and with the use of words, and not in any real inaccuracy. These effects are A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, the disintegration of form, the liberation of the essence which the form confines, the separations of spirit and matter, the end of a cycle, whether planetary, human or solar, the production of obscuration, and the end of objectivity or manifestation. The reabsorption of the essence, and the merging again of differentiated matter with the root of matter. The end of time and space as we understand it. The unification of the three fires and the bringing about of spontaneous combustion, if one might so express it. I. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-159 The synthetic activity of matter and the three types of movement, rotary, spiraling cyclic and onward progression, which unified movement will be produced by the interaction of the fires of matter, of mind and of spirit upon each other. When the point of rhythm or balance is reached in a solar system, in a plane, in a ray, in a causal body, and in the physical body, then the occupier of the form is loosed from prison, he can withdraw to his originating source, and is liberated from the sheep which has hitherto acted as a prison, and he can escape from an environment which he has utilized for the gaining of experience and as a battleground between the pairs of opposites. The sheep or form of whatever kind then automatically disintegrates. IV. Rotary motion and symbolism. Every rotating sphere of matter can be pictured by using the same general cosmic symbols as are used for the portrayal of evolution. 1. The circle. This stands for the ring pass not of indifferentiated matter. It stands for a solar system or the body logoic. Viewed etherically, it stands for a planet or the body of a heavenly man viewed etherically. It stands for a human body, viewed likewise, etherically and it stands for them all at the prime or earliest epoch of manifestation. It stands finally for a single cell within the human vehicle, and for the atom of the chemist or physicist. 2. The circle with the point in the center. This signifies the production of heat in the heart of matter, the point of fire, the moment of the first rotary activity, the first straining of the atom, motivated by latent heat, into the sphere of influence of another atom. This produced the first radiation, the first pull of attraction, and the 160 ATREATISE on cosmic fire. Consequent setting up of a repulsion and therefore producing 
3, the circle divided into 2. This marks the active rotation and the beginning of the mobility of the atom of matter, and produces the subsequent extension of the influence of the positive point within the atom of matter till its sphere of influence extends from the center to the periphery. At the point where it touches the periphery it contacts the influence of the atoms in its environment. Radiation is set up and the point of depression makes its appearance, marking the inflow and outflow of force or heat. We're here only showing the application of cosmic symbols to matter, and are not dealing with manifestation from any other angle than that of the purely material. For instance, we are applying the symbol of the point within the circle to the sphere of matter, and the point of latent heat. We are not handling at this point matter is informed by an entity who is to matter, when so informing, a point of conscious life. We are dealing only with matter and latent heat with the result produced by rotary movement of radiatory heat and the consequent interplay of bodies atomic. We are therefore dealing with the point we set out to consider while studying our fifth division, motion in the sheets. 4. The circle divided into 4. This is the true circle of matter, the equal armed cross of the Holy Spirit, who is the personification of active intelligent matter. This shows the fourth dimensional quality of matter and the penetration of the fire in four directions, its threefold radiation being symbolized by the triangles formed by the fourfold cross. This portrays the fourfold revolution of any atom. By this is not meant the ability, of any atom to make four revolutions, but the fourth dimensional quality of the revolution which is the goal aimed at, and which is even now becoming known in matter during this. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N 161 Fourth round, and in this fourth chain, as the fifth spherilla or fifth stream of force in an atom becomes developed, and man can conceive of a fourth dimensional rotary movement, the accuracy of this symbol will be recognized. It will then be seen that all sheets in their progress from inertia to rhythm, via mobility, pass through all stages. Whether they are logoic sheets, the rays in which the heavenly men veil themselves, the planes which form the bodies of certain solar entities, the causal body or the sheath of the ego on the mental plane, the human physical body in its etheric constitution, or a cell in that body etheric. All these material forms, existent in Etheric matter which is the true matter of all forms, are primarily undifferentiated ovoids. They then become actively rotating or manifest latent heat. Next they manifest duality or latent and radiatory fire. The expression of these two results in fourth dimensional action are the wheel or rotary form turning upon itself. 5. The swastika, or the fire extending not only from the periphery to the center in four directions, but gradually circulating and radiating from and around the entire periphery. This signifies completed activity in every department of matter until finally we have a blazing, fiery wheel, turning every way with radiant channels of fire from the center to the ring pass not, fire within, without an amount and so the wheel is consumed and there is not remaining but perfected fire. C. M O T I O N A N D T A T T E N T R E S. Let him take up this matter which enters along three lines. Much has been written and discussed and then defended. Much mystery exists which has aroused the curiosity of the ignorant, and has tempted many 
elucidate somewhat and to give a new angle of vision to. 162 ATRE ATISE on cosmic fire. The study of these abstruse matters. I do not in any way intend to take up the subject from such an angle as to convey rules and information that will enable a man to vivify these centers and bring them into play. I sound here a solemn word of warning. Let a man apply himself to a life of high altruism, to a discipline that will refine and bring his lower vehicles into subjection, and to a strenuous endeavor to purify and control his sheets. When he has done this and has both raised and stabilized his vibration, he will find that the development and functioning of the centers has pursued a parallel course, and that, apart from his active participation, the work has proceeded along the desired lines. Much danger and dire calamity attends the man who arouses these centers by unlawful methods, and who experiments with the fires of his body without the needed technical knowledge. He may, by his efforts, succeed in arousing the fires and in intensifying the action of the centers, but he will pay the price of ignorance in the destruction of matter, in the burning of bodily or brain tissue, in the development of insanity, and in opening the door to currents and forces, undesirable and destructive. It is not the part of a coward, in these matters concerning the subjective life, to move with caution and with care, it is the part of discretion. The aspirant, therefore, has three things to do. 1. 2. Purify, discipline and transmute his threefold lower nature. Develop knowledge of himself, and equip his mental body, build the causal body by good deeds and thoughts. 3. Serve his race in utter self-abnegation. In doing this he fulfills the law, he puts himself in the right condition for training, fits himself for the ultimate application of the rod of initiation, and thus minimizes the danger that attends the awakening of the fire. P-H-Y-S-I-C-A-L-A-N-D-A-S-T-R-A-L-M-O-T-I-O-N-163 all that is intended to do in this treatise, is to cast some further light upon these centers, to show their interrelation, and to trace the effects produced by their rightful development. To do this, as before stated, the subject will be divided into the following divisions. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The nature of the centers. The centers and the rays. The centers and Kundalini. The centers and the senses. The centers and initiation. As can be seen from the above tabulation, the subject is not only vast but abstruse. This is principally owing to the fact that until the race is normally clairvoyant, it is not in a position to verify what is said, and has to accept the statements of those who profess to know. Later when man can see and prove for himself, it will be possible to check up these statements. The time is not yet, except for the few. 1. The nature of the centers. Let us take the first point. I wish to enumerate the centers to be dealt with in this treatise, keeping the enumeration very closely to that laid down earlier, and dealing not with all the centers, but simply with those closely concerned with man's fivefold evolution. As before stated, man, at the close of his long pilgrimage, will have passed through the five kingdoms of nature on his way back to his source. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, planes, the mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, the animal kingdom, 
the human kingdom, the superhuman, or the spiritual kingdom, and will have developed full consciousness on the five. The physical plane. 164. ATREAT.